So the um, middle portion here just describes the eligible uses of funds um, for the Housing Opportunity Fund. I won't go through those, but um, currently the programs we're running focus on um, rental and mortgage assistance. Mortgage assistance is something we'll be talking about in more detail a little bit later in this um, presentation. Um, home repairs, home buying assistance, which is our down payment and closing cost assistance program. Um, and then on the development side, um, creating affordable rental units and for sale development housing. Um, we are currently going through our 2021 annual allocation plan cycle. Um, so we've solicited input from the public um, to determine what programs they feel are most important to run. Um, so it's been approved by the advisory board and the URA board at this point. Um, and we are just um, waiting on city council approval at this point. Um, we are excited to say though that the um, down payment and closing cost assistance assistance program um, is slated to be funded for an additional six hundred thousand dollars for the 2021 year um, and given that the program um, has been growing rapidly as of late that's very exciting for us so uh, Bettina you can go to the next slide thank you um, so this slide is just um, an excerpt from our 2019 annual report for the Housing Opportunity Fund. Um, it just includes some testimonies from um, home buyers and homeowners who have worked with our programs. Um, so just kind of nice to see the impact that we've had so far. Um, you guys can just take a look at that quickly. Matina, you can go to the next slide. All right, so um, now we'll get to our down payment and closing cost assistance program. I'm just going to go over the program very briefly, and then we do have um, two speakers with us today, um, Evan Zuverink of uh, First Commonwealth Bank and Stephen Kaminsky of Dollar Bank. Um, they're both lenders who have worked with the program quite a bit, um, worked with me and my colleague, Brianna Benjamin, um, who help run the program. Um, so they have pretty good experience with the program. Um, so the down payment and closing cost assistance program is for first time home buyers who are purchasing a home within the city of Pittsburgh. Um, so because we our, are funded through the city of Pittsburgh's operating budget, um, the only properties that are eligible for the program are properties that are within the city of Pittsburgh limits. Um, and you do not have to be a first time home buyer if you have purchased a property outside of the city of Pittsburgh. If you're moving into the city of Pittsburgh for the first time and are purchasing a property, you would qualify as a first time home buyer in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, so the um, income limits for the program are, um, they're kind of like two sets. Um, so the first program, the first part is um, borrowers who are at or below 80% of area median income. Um, we'll go a little bit more into what those numbers actually look like in a little bit, but um, those borrowers are eligible for up to $7,500 um, in assistance for the um, for down payment and closing costs. Um, and then borrowers who are at uh, between 80% and 115% area median income are eligible for up to $5,000 um, in assistance. So the way that the program works um, is that we kind of come in towards the end of the home buying process. So um, the lender actually applies for the program on behalf of the client. Um, so once there's a sales agreement in place on a home, um, they will have the lender reach out or um, if they, you know, already have an application on hand, then they will have them apply for the program. Um, we do request that the applications are submitted at least 14 business days before closing, um, just so that we have time to get all of our internal approvals and um, funds transferred over so that closing is not held up by um, our funds. Um, so then from there, once the application is submitted to URA staff, we will 
um, issue approvals to the lender, um, produce a note and mortgage, um, and forward that to the lender, and then arrange for funds to be wired to the closing firm so that the um, everything that is necessary to get the loan closed and the funds over um, to the closing table are all set to go. Um, the final box there on the right hand side just describes the required documents. I'm not going to go into detail, but um, most of those documents are documents that the lender should already have as part of the um, their own loan package. So, um, but the one thing I will note is that we do require that a home buyer has completed a first time home buyer's education course in order to um, participate in the program. So you do have to have a certificate of counseling um, as part of the application package. Okay, Bettina, you can go to the next slide. Um, so this is um, the area median income levels. Um, as you can see here, um, so for the 80% or below, um, the income limit for a household size of one is $46,500, and for a household size of four is $66,400. Um, so if, if um, you or a prospective home buyer are um, at or below that income level, then you would be eligible for up to $7,500. Um, and in the same vein, for 115% um, AMI, the income limit would be 66,850 for a household size of one and 95,450 for a household size of four. Um, and if you were at or below that income level, then um, the home buyer would be eligible for up to $5,000 in assistance. We can go to the next slide. Um, so, as I said briefly earlier, our program has been um, growing pretty quickly over the past few months. Um, so, the program launched in January of 2019. So, since then, um, we have closed 156 loans. Um, so, it's pretty exciting. Um, and we average about seven closings per month, although um, you can see here on the chart that in the past few months that has been um, kind of increasing. Uh, in September, we closed 17 loans, which is kind of amazing for considering what we usually do. So um, we hope to see that continue into um, the new year. Bettina, you can go to the next slide. Um, so this just kind of gives an overview of all of our programs, the down payment and closing cost um, assistance program is highlighted here. Um, but it kind of gives you an overview of um, how many units we've assisted, as well as the breakdown of the area median incomes that we've assisted. And you can go to the next slide, Bettina. Thank you. Um, so now we'll get to our guest speakers. Um, I don't know if you guys want to switch up who goes first this time. Uh, Evan, you can go first. You're usually pretty good at that. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Um, so I don't know that everybody is is logged in uh, to the Zoom. Uh, so I'll just kind of go through each of the questions and maybe we'll mix it up, Steve. Uh, I'll answer each question first and then um, let you kind of piggyback on it. And then uh, Doran and Vettina can hit us with additional questions uh, as well as the audience. So folks, this is really meant to be interactive. Uh, share, we're going to share a lot of great information, but uh, the most important thing is that you guys take away uh, the value of the information that we provide. So uh, the first question, how long have you been working with the Housing Opportunity Funds Down Payment and Closing Cost Assistance Program? Uh, and I think my answer is since day one. Uh, we were a firm believer and firm supporter as a corporation in the work that uh, the URA was doing in this space and having the dedicated funding stream through uh, the transfer tax that created the Housing Opportunity Fund uh, is something that we're really proud of. And I think, uh, yeah, it, it's been a fun ride for the past few years. Steve, how about you guys? Yeah, we've been in since day one as well since we heard of the program. And um, any opportunity we have for any borrowers that come our way <clears throat> to take advantage of it, we, we certainly uh, do everything we can to get them into the funds and get some funds to help them out. 
Yep, perfect. Uh, the next question is how does this resource help first time home buyers uh, with their buying power? Um, so I think, I think about Housing Opportunity Fund as a very, very flexible tool. Um, so the answer is three. Uh, the first is we can apply the, the Housing Opportunity Fund assistance fully as down payment assistance, which means it reduces how much you're borrowing from the bank, which in turn means a slightly lower monthly payment. Um, you know, $7,500 is probably not going to decrease your monthly payment by $100, uh, but 20, 30 bucks a month uh, over the life of the loan, depending on the term of your loan and the product, uh, as well as the loan amount is, is feasible. Uh, but this helps reduce your debt to income ratio. So sometimes we use it to structure the deal to help you qualify for a specific loan product. But ultimately the benefit when we apply it as down payment assistance is helping you lower that monthly payment. The other side of the table um, is closing cost assistance. So when you start adding it all up, uh, the origination fees that the bank charges, um, the credit report, the flood certificate, the appraisal, um, setting up your escrow account, so a year's worth of taxes, a year's worth of homeowner's insurance, potentially mortgage insurance, depending on the product you're buying, um, as well as the third party fees, uh, the title insurance policy, if it's applicable, all the settlement fees, realtor commissions, all that fun stuff in um, makes it a very costly thing to do. So we can apply that money to help reduce your closing costs, which the benefit to you there is less money coming out of your pocket uh, to become a homeowner. And then probably the third category, uh, which is probably the category I see the most, is a combination of both. So we'll use a couple thousand dollars to help you meet that down payment requirement. Uh, and then we'll use uh, the balance of the, the grant, whether it's 5,000 or 7,500 to help offset closing costs. Steve, you wanna add anything on that? Uh, yeah, the only thing we, yeah, just uh, kind of echoing what you said uh, is that when people come to us, and they're interested in the program and they're going to purchase a house and we ask them basically what do you need the assistance with more do you need closing cost assistance do you need down payment assistance and sometimes that determines what type of mortgage products we have to put people in because there are limits in different types of mortgage products as to what you can use those funds for so that is one of the main things that we do is get a feel for how the borrower would want to use those funds if they want to use it for closing costs, well, then there's certain mortgage products we would put them into. Dollar Bank has some great, their own product for first time home buyers, but there are some limitations into what you can use those funds for. Generally in that program we have called Rent No More. It's a great product for first time home buyers, but with the way this is structured and the URA putting a second lien on the property, mainly it has to go to all extra down payment for them. So it's really how the borrower wants to use the funds, which helps us determine what mortgage product is best for them. And we show them different options with different products. And if you want to use it for closing costs, or if you don't mind, you know, we'll give them different options to see which direction they want to go. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Steve. Um, if you decide to buy a home and you're buying in the city and can qualify for the Housing Opportunity Fund, you should absolutely reach out to one of my loan officers here at the bank um, and we can kind of walk you through those scenarios, you know, looking at how it might be structured, applying all of it towards down payment, all of it towards closing costs, or a little bit of both. Um, you know, the most important thing I, I you know, tell folks when they uh, talk to me about buying a home is ultimately this is your transaction. We can tell you um, from a guideline perspective, from an investor perspective, from a policy perspective, what you can and can't do. But anything within those parameters, what you can do, are decisions that are totally up to you. So um, taking advantage of it, um, following your loan officer's recommendation. You know, Steve and I, uh, um, if you look at our pictures, you can see I have a receding hairline and no offense, Steve, he doesn't have a hairline. Uh, you know, we've been doing it's this a long time. I had a hairline. Right? So we've been doing this a long time. We've got some tips and tricks and can help you think about the best way to structure these. Uh, but, you know, by all means, uh, this is your transaction. This is your um, home purchase. So as long as it's allowable, it's something that you should be discussing. So really good point there. Um, the next question uh, is how would you explain the process from the lender's perspective? Um, and the way I think about this folks is this is um, before you go buy a house or make an offer on a house, you should obviously talk to your lender 
uh, whether that's First Commonwealth or Dollar Bank uh, or somebody else, frankly. Um, we want to make sure that we talk to your realtor about explaining this to the seller when they present the offer, helping them understand that, you know, greatly um, and much to the credit of Doran and Brianna and uh, Bettina, this is a very smooth process and doesn't add time to the transaction, which is something, especially in today's market, sellers are very sensitive to uh, looking at an offer that's 60 days or so. That's just not an attractive offer. So one of the strengths of the Housing Opportunity Fund, I would say, is we can kind of double track uh, the Housing Opportunity Fund application process at the same time as your loan application process, which really means no additional time, where some other down payment or assistance programs uh, may require additional steps, may require additional detail that tend to draw the process out a little bit longer. Steve, you want to add on that? Uh, no, I think that's great, uh, great uh, information there. And uh, yeah, it, it really is a smooth process with, with the people there at URA. We've had really no issues with them. And uh, just one thing I would add to that, and I think we discussed this last night, that we will look for other opportunities for aid for you too, because you can use different programs in conjunction with the URA as well. So uh, we always are on the lookout for any assistance we can get, any borrower that comes to us. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely echo that sentiment. And then the last question teed up on the screen is what would you say to other lenders or realtors who have not worked with the program and may be hesitant? Um, you know, the, the position that I like to, to frame the conversation when folks say, why do you work so well with the Housing Opportunity Fund? Um, and it's, I think, and, and Steve would probably share similar sentiments, is it doesn't take any extra time. Uh, yes, it's filling out one extra box on the agreement of sale which would take approximately 45 seconds. Uh, but ultimately, this is helping um, your customers as a lender or your customers as a realtor um, get to the finish line. Uh, especially when we talk about folks who are below 120% area median income, they're not making a ton of money every year. So saving for the down payment and closing costs, especially in the city of Pittsburgh where transfer taxes are remarkably high uh, where there are other expenses associated with the transaction and purchase prices tend to be a little bit higher, uh, this helps remove a major obstacle that helps convert more of your customers into closed transactions, uh, which is good for every lender and every realtor uh, that I know of in the universe. So um, there's no good reason not to participate as ultimately I think you help more families uh, achieve the dream of home ownership. Uh, but you also help folks um, really utilize resources that are available to them. Steve? Uh, yeah, I don't really much, can't really much add to that. Um, you know, we do actually, a lot of times we will have to explain to real estate agents how the program works and how it's going to benefit their, their customer. And generally, I found that once we get an agent that's involved in one of these transactions and they see how beneficial it is, they certainly try to put that out to all their customers and try to get help that way. Yeah, and I think um, to go off script just for a second, because I think this is something, uh, as I look at the line, there's some folks who uh, are definitely interested in the journey of home ownership. If I could give you, in my years of experience, um, one piece of advice, it would be to follow this sequential order. Number one, get educated. Uh, we have a number of great HUD certified counseling agencies here in Pittsburgh, like the Urban League, like NeighborWorks, uh, there are online vehicles to do it. Please, 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 the best thing you can do to set yourself up for success is to attend a home buyer education seminar or pre-purchase counseling course, which simultaneously, folks, helps you check the box as it's required that you go and attend this class and get the certificate to uh, be approved for a Housing Opportunity Fund grant. Uh, number two, before you go find a realtor, please get pre-qualified. Um, or pre-approved with a lender. Um, you know, Steve and, and I firmly will help you have the conversations around what your goals are. Um, we'll be thoughtful and intentional uh, about what we're pre-qualifying you for um, versus just saying, give me the maximum that I can afford. Maybe that's right for you. Maybe you're more concerned about the monthly payment, or maybe you're more concerned about, um, you know, trying to find a house in a certain neighborhood or a certain 
um, you know, school district, right? These are things that are all factors that you should talk about. And it's always tough. Uh, it's probably one of the worst feelings when I get an agreement of sale to somebody I've never talked to before. I run the scenario and they can't qualify. Uh, and then the third piece is ask questions. Ask questions of your lender, ask questions of your realtor, ask questions of the title company. Uh, all of these folks at the end of the day are getting paid on your dime. Uh, you aren't necessarily writing them a check directly, uh, but it is factored into the transaction. So uh, knowing that you are ultimately footing the bill for all of the transaction, uh, whether you get assistance or not, uh, those are your resources to allocate. Make sure that you ask lots of questions and stay fully informed in the process. Um, being well informed and knowledgeable, I think, is a central key uh, to being a successful homeowner. Steve, you want to go off script for a minute? Uh, yeah, just kind of reiterating what you said, you know, when you go into this process and you do get some education, but, you know, your real estate agent and uh, Evan and people like myself are there to help you. So you're not really in it alone. We're there to guide you along the way, answer questions make suggestions on what we think is best product for you and things. So just try to remember that, that you're not out there alone in this process. We're all here with you, shepherding and helping you on the way through. So some people can feel that that's a lot they have to take on themselves, but you do have people here that are here to help you and get you through the process as best we can. Yep. Perfect. Um, I think at this point, looking over at Doran and Bettina, I think we're opening it up for questions, if memory serves. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I haven't seen any questions in the chat. Bettina, have you gotten any? Nope, I don't see any questions either. Okay. Um, so if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to speak up now, or we can definitely take questions at the end of the presentation as well. All right. Okay. Well, we will move forward. And um, yeah, again, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to speak up. Um, so did I just unmute oh, myself? Yeah. Oh, yep. Hi. Okay. Oh, so I couldn't figure it out. I'm sorry. I do That's have a okay. quick question with the household size um, in qualifying for what kind of income that the um, borrowers may qualify for. What is considered the household size? Is that anyone who's on the deed or the loan, or is that like children as well? I, I'm a little confused on that. Yeah, that's a good question, Julie. Um, so the household size would be anyone who will be living in the new house. Um, so um, that would include children, um, but the, um, I will say that if there's going to be someone else on the deed, we will also have to underwrite their income. So that would have to be included in the income, even if they're not going to be um, like a co-borrower, um, okay. we would have, still have to underwrite the income. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Doran, we actually got another question for Evan and Steve. Um, so what is the average turnaround time from URA application submission from the MLO to approval of the funding from the URA? Um, oh. So that's, that's a bit of a loaded question. So uh, it's, think of it as kind of two phrases, uh, two phases, sorry. The first is at time of loan application when a borrower signs their disclosures, that's when we can officially submit the package to Doran or Brianna, right? Uh, and it's not a complete package. Uh, and the reason it's not complete is it also requires uh, a copy of the appraisal. And if they have not yet completed it, the eight hour home buyer education class certificate. So uh, that's why I say if you do the education piece on the front end, the only thing we're waiting on is the appraisal. And I would say the uh, once I submit the appraisal, it's usually within two weeks we can close. Uh, that's the money's available, the check is in hand. So as you know, right now appraisals are a little wonky, uh, but outside of that, I mean, pre-COVID, there was never an issue in app to close getting there in about 30 days. Now that COVID's here with the uh, delay on appraisal, I think it's probably somewhere between 30 and 45 days typically. 
but it's it's no longer than a normal transaction because this sounds like an MLO question. Um, this is all kind of happening simultaneously. Steve, you want to add to that? No, I pretty much agree with everything you said there. Uh, once we get all the documentation we need, and obviously the appraisal is always the last thing we get, we get it up to the people there at the uh, Doran and Brianna at uh, URA as soon as we can once we have that. So they have a you know, a good amount of time to get their decision and we can have the funds ready to go for closing. So it usually goes very smoothly once we have that piece. Yep, I agree. All right, thank you, Evan and Steve. Any other questions? Okay, um, so we'll move on to um, talking about mortgage assistance. Um, the URA is offering mortgage assistance for homeowners within the city of Pittsburgh through our housing stabilization program. Um, so it is up to three months of assistance or a maximum of $6,000, whichever comes first um, for mortgage or utility arrears. Um, we work with a few different service providers to facilitate this program. Those include Action Housing, Neighbor Works of Western Pennsylvania, and Urban League of Greater Pittsburgh. Um, so there are three main requirements for this program. The property must be in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, the client must be at or below 80% area median income, which if you'll remember um, was 46,500 for a household size of one and $66,400 annually for a household size of four. Um, and there must be documented um, loss of income related to COVID. Um, so that could be cut back in hours, um, loss of job, unable to find a job, things like that, but it must be documented. Um, so we just wanted to remind people that mortgage assistance is something that we are offering in light of COVID. Um, I know that a lot of um, banks are offering forbearances at this time, but we're anticipating that those will be lifted. Um, and we wanna make sure that everyone is aware that there are resources to help you if you are having trouble making mortgage payments. Additionally, we still also have um, rental assistance available through our housing stabilization program that can assist in um, paying rental arrears um, and utility arrears as well. Um, so the, and as a reminder, if Bettina, you could go to the next slide. Um, you would apply for assistance by contacting Southwestern Pennsylvania's United Way by calling 211. Um, you can also text them at the number listed here. Um, you can also chat with them or go to their website. Um, so they will um, get information from you and then refer you on to service providers to get you um, assistance through the housing stabilization program. All right, so we will open it up to any final questions. Um, anyone has anything else? Okay, well, if no one has any questions, um, stop me if someone's trying to type really quickly in the chat. Um, but if no one has any additional questions, I think we'll wrap it up here. I'd like to thank um, Evan and Steve for being here today and last night. You guys were awesome and we really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Uh, yes. Oh, so we will be, uh, we did record this. Um, so we can uh, send out a recording to the attendees.